Hey guys, welcome to Data Talkies. In this video, we will be covering the question of the week, how to run a Python application using Spark Summit locally on Mac. I'm assuming you know how to write Python Spark code and are familiar with Spark and Spark SQL functions for this tutorial. As you might know, there are two ways to execute your Spark code. First is interactive shells like PySpark, Spark Shell. This is mostly used for testing or development purposes. And the second way is Spark Submit, where you package your application and submit it to Spark for the execution. In this video, we will be seeing how to package your application and run it using Spark Submit locally. I will be using Mac for this tutorial. I have already downloaded the Spark on my laptop. I have made a video on the installation of Spark. You can check that video if you have not installed Spark already. So now for this particular example, I have one sample file.csv in my download directory. I will paste the content of the file in the description and you can make a CSV file if you want to run a sample example. I will be using this file to process it in Spark. So now let's just go to the Python editor to make a Python file and then start writing the Spark code. I'm going to use Sublime, but you can choose any editor of your choice. If you don't have any IDE for Python, then you can first download it. Let me quickly go to the browser to show the Sublime text. Here is the website link. You can click on it. Here you go. So this is the uh, website to download the Sublime text. Here you can just click on the download for Mac and it will start downloading the Sublime on your laptop. Okay, now let's come to the main topic. Open a new file and start writing your Spark code. I'm already in the Sublime text and I have already written the code for this example. I'm gonna use that one. Here is my code, which we are gonna run by using Spark Submit. Here you can see there is a main method which will be the entry point of your code. You can make all your Python functions outside of this main method and just call them in the main to execute them. Now let's just go to the function which is actually doing the Spark processing on the file. Here you can see I'm making a Spark session first which is the entry point to Spark and its functionality. You can give any name to your application while making the Spark session. After the session is created, I'm trying to read the file using Spark functions. Here you can see I'm loading my sample file, which is in my download directory, and I'll try to run all the Spark related function on top of it. I will run a few SQL statements on the data which got loaded from the file. Here you can see it will print 60 records on the screen when done. Cool, so now we have a Python file ready. Now let's try to execute this Python file using Spark Submit. Let's go to the terminal. Let me check my present working directory. Let's go to Spark directory from here. And my Spark is in my download directory. Okay, I'm in the Spark directory. Now do ls to see all the content in this particular directory. All the scripts which connected code to Spark are under the bin folder. So now let's just change the directory to bin here. Okay, I'm in the bin. Now do ls. As you can see, the PySpark, Spark Shell, Spark Summit, all the scripts are here. Okay, so we want to run the Spark Summit, right? Let's check the Spark Summit usage by typing Spark Summit help. Here you can see the usage mentioned as Spark Summit, and then you need to pass one out of three, either the app jar, Python file, or R file, right? Very straightforward. So you just need to type Spark Summit and the name of the Python file. Let's do that and check what happens. Spark submit and then path to Python file, which is 
in work spark tutorials video and count example dot py okay hit enter as you can see spark is starting the application meanwhile let's go to spark web ui which is always on local host and port 4040 here you go okay looks like execution is finished you can see the results here state color and respective count which we process in the code now let's check the ui one more time it is not available anymore because the job has finished it remains available only for the time the application is up and running if you want to explore the web ui for a longer time you can try one hack here Let's go to the code again. Here there is a line which is called input. I'm going to uncomment this line. This basically keeps our job active until the user presses something on the keyboard. Like the input, input function works like input function basically expect the input from the user from the keyboard, right? So we'll just add this line and we will not press anything on the keyboard. When you are done analyzing your web UI, just press control C and the job will finish. Okay, let's quickly run the job again after uncommenting the input line. The job is not finishing up because it's waiting for the user to press any key from the keyboard, which we will not press as we want to check the UI. Now let's just go to the UI quickly. You can see here that the web UI is up. You can go to the stages tab here and explore all the stages. You can see multiple stages in this particular page. Now let's just go to the executor tab. There is one executor as this is a local mode and your laptop is the executor as well as your driver. That's it. This is how you run your Python file with Spark submit. There is one more thing to note here is that there are many other options you can pass when running Spark submit on cluster instead of local mode. Let's run Spark submit help one more time. Here you can see lots of flags in the options like master, py files, jars, driver memory, executor memory. All these flags are useful when you submit your job on the cluster. If you are not passing the executor memory or driver memory flag, it will use the default value which you can see set to 1024 MB. We will learn about Spark Summit on cluster with all other flags in upcoming videos. So thank you so much for watching this video.